everybody, and welcome to The Wench Bench, where friends sit and talk about fabulous fictional females. Woo! My name is Vonda. And my name is Allison. Today, Allison is going to be talking about Mulan. Yay! <laughs> so, Allison, are you talking about Mulan as like an entire character or are you specifically talking about Disney or like the legend or like (laughs) we're gonna get into all of it okay (laughs) I'm gonna be talking about both the movies Mm -hmm. briefly about the second one because I don't know about you but I wasn't a fan (laughs) I I don't remember the second one it's not good I know it was one I know it was a thing it existed (laughs) yeah it's not good (laughs) But the first one's amazing. Probably, like, one of my top five Disney movies from when I was younger. I just loved it. The soundtrack, amazing. Uh, the story, also amazing. And then I'm going to talk... Man. Yes. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I like that one. Gotta watch how long we sing those songs. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure we're not crossing any... Uh... <laughs> Copyright laws. Copyright laws. I know, that's why I stopped. <laughs> yeah. Get one phrase. Uh, And then I'm going to actually talk about the history. So where it was that Disney pulled from and two, specifically two separate stories, kind of the original written one. And then there was a play. Oh, that was done. So some cool, cool stuff there. Okay. Some basic facts about Mulan. It was a Disney movie released in 1998 based on the legend of Hua Mulan. Hua Mulan? I'm going to go with Hua I am going to apologize right now. There are a lot of names, especially coming later, that I am probably going to mispronounce because it's hard. And I apologize. I tried looking it up and my English speaking mouth is bad at other languages. And I'm sorry. (laughs) I think as long as we do our best at trying to pronunciate it. And then apologizing for bad pronunciation shows that we're at least trying our best. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do our best. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was extremely well received and grossed over 304 million, which is a lot. That was a lot of money. (laughs) Yeah. There was an animated sequel in 2004, and now there is soon to be a live action remake in 2020. I know. I'm so excited for that. I'm super excited. I'm a little worried because I heard that they might not be doing the music, which... I am going to be talking a little bit about the importance of the music as far as production and stuff like that goes, because I will get into a little bit of the production side of it, because I do find that a lot of that is interesting. I think music is important, but I think I read an article just briefly onto that topic. Disney's Mulan movie wasn't just owned by Disney. This Um. other man, um, I'll fact check it and then insert it later, um, owns like a lot of the rights to the songs music. for Mulan and there was issues and so because of the issues the new Disney yeah. movie can't use specifically his songs. Yeah. That's, I, like, I get it but I It also, still sucks because they're yeah. really good songs. They're such good songs. Um, so I'm going to give a brief synopsis of both films, since I'm sure people are pretty familiar with them. I can kind of skip through pretty fast, mm-hmm. and we can talk about all the good nostalgic feels that we have, and why we love Mulan so much. I've also done, as I mentioned, I've also done some digging on the history and source material of the character, which was fascinating, and I went down a lot of rabbit holes, and it was a lot. <laughs> So, the first Mulan movie. Uh, The Huns have invaded China, and the Emperor orders that one man from each family must join the army to fight the invaders. Fa Zhu, Mulan's father, is the only family member that can fulfill this role, but he is old and a veteran, and in Mulan's eyes, has done his part to serve his country. While this is happening, we get an incredible makeover scene where Mulan is washed and dressed and gets a bunch of makeup put on her and is sent to training to become an honorable wife. And awesome song for this. And you get to see her grandma with the little cricket, giving her, like, the good luck cricket, um, who apparently was not actually, like, intended in the movie at all. (laughs) Um, But I guess a couple of the animators really wanted this fucking cricket. (laughs) And so they put him in. 
So she goes and does this and fails spectacularly, much to the disappointment of her family. Except her grandmother, kind of, because her grandma is adorable and gives her a lucky cricket and generally supports the crap out of her weirdo granddaughter. Yeah, her grandma's amazing. Aww. Like, reading back again on the story, I always forget, like, how bomb Grandma Mulan is, because she is <laughs> I, I, funny and adorable. <laughs> Mulan, fearing for her father's life and being ashamed that she cannot bring Otter to her family in a traditional sense, steals her father's armor and leaves to take his place. When they discover this, good old grandma prays for assistance from the ancestors, and that's how we get Mushu, Mulan's helper and cheerleader, little dragon. That's also kind of an accident, but I'm sure you remember. Mm -hmm. (laughs) If you don't, go watch the movie, it's fine. Uh, during training, she passes as a man with some help from her new friends and fellow recruits, Yao, Ling, and Chen Po. Uh, and she also proves that she is a capable soldier. There are a few close calls in there as she begins to fall for her trainer, Li Shang. Hot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Childhood crush. Love Li Shang. <laughs> Uh, They are ordered to follow the main army and end up coming upon an encampment that has been massacred by the Huns. Shortly after, they are ambushed by the Huns themselves, and Mulan saves everyone by causing an avalanche with a cannon, but getting hurt in the process. And because they have to heal her and give her medicine and treatment, this is when it is discovered that she is a woman. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Shang spares her life, which is technically against the law, but leaves her alone in the mountains. As she is following behind, she's the one who sees that the Huns are not actually dead, including their leader, Shan Yu. Mulan rushes to the palace to warn everyone, but no one believes her because she's a woman <laughs> and the emperor is taken hostage. Well, actually, because she's a woman and because not only that, but she's a disgraced woman on top of everything. So oh. it's like extra horrible oh oh a disgraced woman you say oh it makes so much more sense now oh okay (laughs) yao ling and chen po join mulan to rescue the emperor who has been taken hostage and they sneak into the castle dressed as concubines which is amazing because (laughs) they're dressed as women because nobody expects women to do anything (laughs) oh li shang also tags along because oh really why not <laughs> and in order to get in they actually use mulan's trick because during training nobody could get the arrow from the top of the post and so rather than carrying the weights up like everybody else was trying to do mulan used them as like a sling to help her climb the pole using her mind and her intuition rather than just her brute strength and so they all do that to climb up the poles of the side so it's like oh they all learn from her <laughs> which is adorable <laughs> Shang stops Shan Yu from killing the emperor, and Mulan lures him onto the roof where she shoots him with a firework. (laughs) The entire city and even the emperor bows to her in an incredible moment of honor. The emperor gifts her his crest and Shan Yu's sword and offers her a place as his advisor. She declines and asks simply to return home. When she returns, she presents her father with the gifts And he sets them inside to embrace her, showing that she is actually the most important part to him. Not the gifts, not the honor, but her, his daughter. Shang also goes to her house a little bit later, since he has a crush on her, and Grandma invites him in for dinner. (laughs) Uh, This is where I think it's like, do you want to stay... I think Mulan asks if he wants to stay for dinner, and the grandma yells, Do you want to stay forever? Oh, that is... I think that's reused a lot for memes. (laughs) I love and it's so good. <laughs> Watching this movie again and remembering it, of course, things like this will have like their problematic parts. But overall, we're going to talk about the problematic parts. Overall, I don't want anybody to get their panties in a twist. I love this movie. Absolutely amazing. Still awesome. <laughs> a couple of the things that I noticed was that as amazing as the To Be a Man song it's kind of problematic oh. yeah. in a couple of parts, like especially when they're talking about like women. But I understand that that's supposed to be the culture. 
which again is a little bit there's some issues with like cross cultural things especially because it was a white man directing a movie yeah, 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 yeah. about an Asian culture so that kind of had a few issues but yeah like they just they wanted them to be pretty or know how to cook or like laugh at their jokes and admire them and not really have any substance and feed them and yeah Chen Po arguably the most adorable because all he wants is a wife who knows how to cook doesn't care what she looks like doesn't care anything he just he wants, wants food to, yeah <laughs> and so arguably best man Chen Po <laughs> oh Chen Po <laughs> so that's kind of like that has a little bit of an issue but they do learn like by the end they respect Mulan and they love her and, and in the second movie don't they end up dating people that are kind of like completely the opposite of what they were seeking in the first movie <laughs> they do we'll get to it it's yeah. okay <laughs> but so there's like there's that like they learn they did and learn. they don't stick with their but yeah they it's did such learn. a catchy song I, it's such a catchy such a catchy song song though but also this is the song where i had mentioned that you see the importance of music in this film because mm-hmm. that's actually the last song in the whole movie until the very end credits because that's when it ends with them coming upon that camp. And all of a sudden, this is no longer a fun movie. There's no longer jokes and laughing. This is the reality of war and history. And I don't necessarily know if I consciously understood that as a child. Oh, I did. But, like, you knew that something was different for the end half of that movie versus the beginning half. Mm -hmm. Like, you just... It got a lot more serious, and I think that that was a really interesting choice to make for that, especially for, like, a kid's movie of all things. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But it's a very, like, abrupt end, but it was so well done and so interesting. And I'm just curious to see if they can pull off that same tonal shift or if they're even going to try and do that, if they're going to try and have it be as fun and like mm-hmm. entertaining in the first half and then have it be a little bit more serious in the second. Yeah, especially um, because the movie isn't going to have Mushu. That's also weird. Or Shang. Yeah. Lee Shang? Shang isn't going to be in it. Mainly because, back to previous, when I said I was going to look up the name of the person that had like the lawsuit thing, Yeah. his name's Jeffrey Katzenberg. Oh, okay. And he owns... Uh, a portion of other movies because he also did a lot of stuff for Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, and Lion King. But all of those movies have been fine, but I think because of the lawsuit, Mulan hadn't come out yet after the lawsuit. Oh, yeah. So they... He basically got a lot of... Um, a lot of stuff. A lot of percentages rights. and rights with it. So mm-hmm. That's fair. Yeah. I also wanted to point out that in the cross-dressing scene, Yao, the short, gravelly-voiced one, uh, has an orange and a banana. And as his boobs. (laughs) And I remember being a kid that is probably, like, one of my favorite scenes in this entire movie because I remember being a kid and you see Chen Po, the biggest one. He has two watermelons, obviously. Uh, and Ling has two apples because he's tall and skinny. And then Yao pulls out an orange and a banana. And I'm just like, what? Why does he have a banana? <laughs> like, that's not even the right shape. <laughs> and I just, I just laugh at that part so much. And it's so cute, though, because, yeah, like, they just, like, that could be seen as insensitive and stuff like that, too. But I think that it was played in a way that they weren't, it wasn't cross-dressing as a joke. It was very much cross-dressing as a way to kind of bend the system and get around, like, the guards and stuff. Um, although the guards did do make a joke about how ugly they are. Yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of fair, because they all still have their facial hair. Oh. And... <laughs> but now I'm thinking that's so sad. Yeah. That's They're so very sad. ugly concubines. Oh. <laughs> I for, I didn't even I don't even remember also, the banana the, thing. The balls of putting concubines in a kids movie. I had no idea what they were. <laughs> As an adult, I was like, "Huh. Cool." <laughs> like, things that you don't register as a child. Things you don't register, which was incredible. 
Originally, it was written to be a romantic comedy where Mulan is betrothed to Shang and what? Run, and runs away to forge her own destiny. <laughs> oh, I would have liked that actually. <laughs> it's wild. <laughs> oh, that sounds really fun. Oh, damn, we missed out. <laughs> like so weird. <laughs> The runaway scene, so the scene in the rain where she's getting the suit of armor and everything, yeah, yeah. like gorgeous scene, still yeah. stunning the song animation for it too was good. Um, yeah, because it it had no it had no words in the song, um, which was actually an act of choice because they had heard it with originally I think it was like reflection over it or something. Can't remember what song that they had put over it, but it they just went with music. Because they found that like the they didn't need the words to explain mm. what was happening, it would actually have more impact without any words. This was actually the first scene that they had put into production, and it was because of this that it kicked off the minimalist dialogue approach to this film. Mm. Because if you watch it again, thinking about how many words are in a movie like Beauty and the Beast or Aladdin versus the words in Mulan, a lot of it is done through show, not tell, which makes it a very interesting Mm. film. Very interesting film. General Lee was originally not supposed to be Shang's father. That's the one who led the rest of the camp. And he's the one who dies in his camp because Shang finds his helmet. Yeah. Um, But by changing it, the filmmakers were able to mirror Mulan and Shang's stories by showing both of their love for their fathers. So it was able to kind of have that really nice um, balance between the stories, which, again, I feel like is one of those things that you kind of pick up on self-consciously in a way and not really think about it actively unless you're looking for it or unless you're making it (laughs) yeah or if you're also maybe it's a a a cultural thing too Mm -hmm. i'd be really interested to like talk to someone and hear them discuss mulan from Mm -hmm. a different perspective of of being chinese Mm -hmm. or even even like half chinese yeah or just i i think it'd be interesting to see what they would have to say about that yeah i'm so curious yeah There were originally no animal companions in the source material, so that's why they added Mushu and Cricky. I love Mushu. (laughs) I know. Only three people really cared about Cricky. The story artist, Joe Grant, the animator, Barry Temple, and the CEO, Michael Eisner. So they basically, like, any time that they were doing a scene, one of the, um, that animator, Barry Temple, kept, like, being like, oh, Cricky could be in here. So, like, he went in and, like, added Cricky in scenes. Aww. Because nobody gave a shit. Like, nobody cared about that Cricket. But he's, like, probably one of my favorite characters Aww. in everything. Uh, he's just so cute. <laughs> and he keeps Mushu in check. <laughs> uh, they Gosh. worked... Very hard, actually, to get Asian voice actors cast in the roles. Oh. So if you actually look it up, like, it's a lot of, yeah, like, mostly Asian voice actors, which I think the the actor who plays Yao is a white man, and when they actually offered him the role, he was going to turn it down because he's like, "This this is a Chinese story, like, it should have Chinese actors. But then they're like, they had this list of the other ones and they're like, we just, we want like a different kind of sound. And he does have a very deep, like weird growly voice. Mm. Like he has a very memorable voice. So, so that's they were why looking they wanted for him. something in particular. Yes. Oh. Yeah. And so he had it and they're like, we have all these other people too. And so that's the only reason why he felt comfortable doing it is because the rest, like the vast majority of the rest of the cast is Asian voice actors. I didn't actually know that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The more mm-hmm. you know. The more you know. Uh, Fa is the Cantonese pronunciation of Mulan's family name. Hua is the correct Mandarin pronunciation and means flower. Oh. Uh, Hua Ping, Mulan's Hua. fake name, means flower vase or just vase in China. And a feminine man is often called a flower vase or a flower pot. <laughs> Oh! Yeah! <laughs> so. Okay! <laughs> so, because it's a woman dressed as a man, he had the name Flower Pot. 
do you think that I'm torn how I feel about that because that's it's weird it's really weird and also it kind of <sighs> like I feel like back then it was like a funny joke but now like that I term, think that would really offend like I'm curious I would be curious to hear if anybody who bothers to listen to this show is <laughs> <laughs> is Chinese or possibly understands the current culture and if that is now considered more of a derogatory term kind of the way that a few of the words that we used to use back in the 90s and the early 2000s have changed i would be curious to see if that same term has also kind of changed and how it is that they kind of look at that so yeah if you're listening (laughs) i generally want to know because like it's kind of what i think is funny is the play on word part where they were like oh her family name means flower and then this means vase and her like hidden name is gonna mean flower vase or flower pot like that's funny but telling me that in china it's they would call a more feminine man a flower pot now i'm like um it's it's weird it's curious yeah like i'd be curious to see please reach out please tell us and i want to know if it's offensive yeah and if it is really offensive the history of it yeah because be there, i'm sure there's a reason why mm-hmm. it's we like get enough people. We get enough people answering our weird questions. We might have one of those episodes where we talk about things that listeners have told us. <laughs> yeah, or have someone come on and be like, "I want to talk about this thing that you talked about." That'd be mm-hmm. nice. Okay, yeah. anyways, continuing back to. Um, and my Mulan. last fun fact for the first movie is only Mulan and Jasmine wear pants. They're the only princesses. Everybody else wears dresses. Oh my gosh. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Only two wear pants. Probably why they're my two favorite princesses. (laughs) Ha! I was a little girl who hated dresses. (laughs) So. (laughs) I wanted to love dresses. Like, they look nice, but then you get them on as a kid and you're like... "Mm." Yeah. No, I wasn't a fan. I didn't like them. Huh. Yeah. Jasmine and Mulan were my... Were my faves. Pocahontas. Yeah. Love my mother dress. was a very socially conscious person, though, and would not let me dress up as Pocahontas Mulan or or oh, Jasmine. Yeah. So I got to be Snow White and Cinderella, much to my chagrin. I know. I get it now. Thanks, Mom. You're like, thank you. <laughs> Still, you're like, Still, hey, though. You're cool. I do love them, and they are amazing. Now, on to... <laughs> Move on to, uh, I have much less notes about this one. Uh, <laughs> much less notes about the storyline. A little more issues with the, <laughs> the content. So move on to, in this one, Mulan and Shang are now engaged. And Mushu doesn't want to lose out on his position as family protector. So he sets out to break them up. Because I what? guess, I guess in Chinese culture... When you get married, you move on to being protected by your husband's temple. Oh. I believe, again, if I get any of this wrong, I'm sorry. Please let me know. This is just what I gleaned from. The movie specifically? The movie specifically and the articles and stuff that I found online specifically about the movie. Um, Because I already went in enough of a circle with the original story. I didn't also need to go into a circle about the intricacies of cultural differences which are fascinating but i did not have time for that unfortunately so if that's incorrect please let me know but that is the story point essentially okay okay they are tasked with bringing the emperor's three daughters ting ting may and sue to a neighboring country i believe for an arranged marriage to three other princes oh okay to solve some war or something. I don't remember it much. I didn't really look into it much because eh, it's not great movie. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> Along with Yao Ling and Chen Po, the lot of them set out. And as per most movie storylines, the princesses fall in love with the three friends and vice versa. 
Um, a bunch of shenanigans happens. Mushu succeeds in breaking up Mulan and Shang. Mushu. Um, Shang wants to do the job, and Mulan is fighting against the idea of arranged marriages. Mm. Uh, Shang saves Mulan by falling to his apparent death. That's it. Period. Shang saves Mulan by falling to his apparent death. <laughs> Uh, to save, quote-unquote, the princesses from their arranged marriages, Mulan offers herself as a bride because she is quite famous in their country. So oh. she would be seen as quite a, um, a valuable exchange. Um, Shang rushes in to stop the wedding, but the ruler won't have it. And Mushu pretends to be the great golden dragon of unity and stops the arranged marriage and instead marries Mulan and Shang which somehow still unites the kingdom's <laughs> weird weirdness. Uh, the two end up uniting their family shrines, so Mushu still gets to remain the protector, and everyone lives happily ever after. <sighs> I, okay. Okay, so... I, didn't, I don't remember this movie at all. I only maybe saw it twice in my childhood. Like, it wasn't... Like, even as a kid, I feel like I... It's just so not what the original one was, which mm-hmm. was so much about, like, empowerment and family love and, like, honor and all of those things that I feel like a lot of that got really thrown out the window in the sequel, especially with, like, the daughters in the Chinese culture portrayed by these movies should want to honor their father. Like, they shouldn't be kind of fighting back. And I'm not a fan of people forcing western ideals onto movies where you are clearly taking the story from another culture and bringing it over here Mm -hmm. because in many cultures arranged marriages are completely normal they still happen today they they still happen today i know people who have been in an arranged marriage and who have lived happily for their entire lives like it's it is a cultural difference. That's mm-hmm. fine if you do not understand it. It's fine if you do not believe in it. But forcing that idea onto a movie about a different culture, I think, is super inappropriate <laughs> and really wrong, which is kind of what they did in this one, which, yes, Mulan herself may not believe in arranged marriages because she is, in these movies, kind of a westernized version of a heroine who, theoretically like Mulan as her character has been portrayed probably wouldn't believe in that because she is so true to herself true to herself and that kind of stuff but as princesses I can only imagine that they were raised to know that one day they would be a part of this like that's how royalty work works like (laughs) in a lot of cultures and so I just found it really really odd (laughs) yeah yeah I wasn't a fan of it and now, as an adult, it has even more problems. Oddly enough, I'm a fan of the Aladdin-directed DVD sequels, but this one, and even The Lion King 2, I love that one. But I feel like this one just so incredibly missed the mark mm-hmm. as a sequel. Like, as like the, the lessons we learned in the first one did not continue in the second one. And it was do you, weird. Do you know if someone else directed the second one? I'm like if not someone sure. else took it, because I always feel like sometimes you can tell when. Uh, just totally, yeah, completely different directors. So, uh, um, the vision shifted. Yes, it did. It shifted a lot, and I feel like you can you can really see that. Um, I was I remember being a kid and being so excited that like you saw the picture and you saw like three different looking female characters. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. I was like, oh cool! Like there's the these three princesses, different. and we'll have more female characters to love. And the best part is that as an adult, they are voiced by Laura Tom, Sandra O, oh, and Lucy Liu, which is Lucy amazing. Liu? <laughs> but like again like it just I just felt so like inauthentic which I fucking hate that word but it did it felt really like inauthentic and really like untrue and like bad to the to the original story the whole tone of the movie felt way too hallmark and even Dutch is upset yeah, even Dutch, Dutch is in the very background upset. Is just... he's very upset about Mulan too <laughs> Uh, it was released to overwhelmingly poor reviews, 
and is largely considered a sequel failure. Which, fair. Most, unfortunately, Mm -hmm. a lot of Disney sequels are. Yes. And as I mentioned, uh, the Western bias on this movie is clear, like, represented in it. Um, And just to look at it, it's just... We, as a society, have moved forward now. I'm not sure. Again, like, this movie came out in 2004, which is, like, it seems... The second one came out in 2004? Really? Yes. Oh. Yeah, 2004. Okay. Um, so, yeah, eight years after the first one. Mmm. I feel like in 2004 we should have known better. (laughs) But we learned slow, so, you know... Hopefully we just learn from it and move on. Yeah. And it seems like they haven't tried to, like, get back into Mulan again. So that's good. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. The original Chinese folklore story is... They, they haven't been able to figure out if it's actually based on a real person because of how far back it goes and that kind of stuff. But it's, it's largely considered now to be more of a Chinese folklore Okay. Yeah, so she's considered like a folklore character rather than a actual person. Historic figure? Yes. Yeah. Um, She is considered a legendary female warrior from the Northern and Southern dynasties. Uh, It has been represented in many forms, from ballads to stories to plays and to film. The Mulan movie stays quite true to the source material of the ballad of Hua Mulan, the only couple differences is that she actually has a very young brother, so he's like an infant brother. Oh. Um, so she is sacrificing herself because like he's too young and her father's too old. Got and it. And so she's kind of the only option. And much better, her parents actually support her leaving in her father's place. Oh. So when she goes to them and she tells them that she's like, I don't want you to die, they consider that honorable. Her honoring, like, them honoring her choice to sacrifice herself. Like, she still shouldn't go because she's a woman and because that's, I think, illegal. Especially her hiding the fact that she's a woman. <laughs> but her parents are like, yeah, like, what you're doing is inc- is incredibly brave. And she's also already trained to fight. So she's oh. not there, like, learning to figure it out. Like, her father's trained her and she knows how to fight with the weapons And all of that stuff. And so she actually goes into it being prepared to go to war. Did he... Do you know if when you were looking up, if it informed whether he trained her for, like, protecting herself? Or whether he just trained her as, like, a father-daughter bonding? I think it was just their... His culture, his choice kind of thing. Like, it didn't really specifically say because it's kind of an old ballad. Yeah. A lot of things probably get lost in translation because Mm. it was hard finding these stories and like even trying to find it the whole thing like in English as a translation was really difficult but um, from what I could figure out uh, he just he wanted to train her so that she knew how to fight okay after 12 years so she fought in the army for 12 years uh, she refuses a post or any recompense and asks only to go home so she's won everything and they're like, okay, like, like, do you want anything? Do you want this job or this money or anything? And she's like, I just want to go home. And so she returns home and puts on her women's clothes again. And she goes to meet her comrades who had no idea that she was a woman. So it was actually her identity was never compromised. There wasn't all of the additional mm-hmm. drama and stuff around that. Like she just, she did, she did what she needed to do to protect her family. Okay. And then she came home to reunite with her family, to put on her women's clothes again, and to go back to being the honorable daughter. I understand why Disney made the changes that it did and all that stuff, but I think that it would have also been really cool if they had just kept the fact that her parents supported her. Yeah. Um, because I would have liked that. And you still could have had that, like, emotional scene of her returning and offering him these gifts and having to be like, no, like, you're the only gift that I need. And it makes me cry all the time. It's so sweet. Um, and then the other major... So that's kind of the ma- the big one. Okay. That's the one that most people recognize. And then there is the the Sui Tang romance version. Of romance? The story. This is the one that got wild. This is the one oh, where I was okay. like, I'm down a freaking rabbit hole on this oh. one. Oh, uh, so it adds in a lot more plot and okay. like crazy twists and turns. So she goes to war 
for Heshana Khan, who is fighting alongside Emperor Taizong in place of her father, but meets a warrior princess named Xian Yang, who discovers Mulan's secret, because Mulan is dressed as a man. Mm -hmm. You know, the usual story. Uh, And they become sworn sisters. Ta-da. Awesome. Yeah, female friendship. Love it. (laughs) In very old China. (laughs) Um, Xian Yang's father is Xia King Du. Xia King Dao? (laughs) Xia King Dao. Maybe. Jian Dei. Xia King Dao Jian Dei. I apologize so much. Uh, Who is fighting against... Khan, oh. like against the first two that Mulan was originally going to war with. Okay. And so she's traded sides. She is now a spy. <gasps> um, or like a double agent. Double agent. Double agent. Uh, <laughs> and as Mulan switches sides. And there's like a crazy amount more drama with a lot more names and things get wild. Like, but I couldn't really go into it because it's a lot of hard to pronounce names. Either way, her and her sworn sister are eventually captured and they surrender themselves to try and save Xian Yang's father, which he still gets executed even after they like, they essentially like are ready to like kill themselves and be like, we will die for him because of like family honor and all of that crazy stuff. But he still Um, dies? But he still dies. They still execute him because they say, so the bad guys say that they set him free. (gasps) But they, they actually lied. kill him and they lie. Oh, um, dishonor. And so the emperor, so the bad guy emperor, he's the one we don't like. Um, <laughs> Batty McBad. Bad guy emperor gives money to the princess um, so that she can marry a general that she, I guess, fell in love with in the story. It was a lot. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, and so she goes off and does that. And that's kind of a way for them to get peace. And then he gives Mulan leave to go home because that's all she wants is to return home to her family but once she gets there she finds out that her father has died and her mother has remarried to somebody else and drama so much drama um and then after she's home and she finds out that her whole like family life is in disarray uh she's told that khan one of the bad guy leaders has summoned her to become his concubine and rather than suffer that kind of fate she commits suicide what yeah uh, before she dies, she gets her sister to deliver a letter from the princess, so the her sworn sister princess friend, to her fiancé, the general. And so the sister dresses it as, as a man to try and deliver this because it's safer to travel as a man, I guess, mm-hmm. um, but is discovered. And apparently the general, like, is attracted to her. Oh, shit. And um, for the fucking life of me, I could not find out what happens after that. What? That's it. That's the end of the fucking story. What? The general's just like, mm, yeah, I like you, sister of Mulan. And that's it. The story ends. And I don't know what happens. Oh, is that because you couldn't find any more information? I couldn't find any more information. Like, everywhere that I looked oh. to try and find the story, it just ends there. And I'm like, what happened to her sister? Oh. <laughs> oh, so you're distraught. <laughs> I spent so long. Please, if you know how this story ends, and if you can find it for me, internet world, and fabulous listeners. And just tell us how to pronounce the names properly oh, so we can Send us like a forward. voice memo or something on email. Oh, God. It just, it breaks me. I seriously spent probably three hours. Just like, I probably gave my computer so many viruses. The weird... <laughs> The weird, like, I went multiple pages into Google, which is not good. No, you want to be, like, the first three are fine. <laughs> yeah, and, like, I was opening up these pages, I was like, I have to find out what happened to her sister. Oh, and I didn't know. Uh, but, yeah, like, it's so crazy, like, soap opera. I never would like, have thought my years would ago. commit suicide. Yeah, but, like, you think about the story especially in that one and you think about kind of what we have learned about her character being about family honor and kind of self-respect you can imagine that somebody who no longer has her father like she's no longer at risk of dishonoring her father but i imagine becoming a concubine would i don't know i can't say this for sure but might dishonor her father's memory and it's to the person that she hates and she fought against and like 
he's t- apparently a tyrant and awful, and it's like I would have just <laughs> sent him a letter with like mm, pass. A fuck I don't you. think <laughs> I don't think that's an option though. No, but if, you know what I mean. Like I think it's implied she's got to go. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, like just fucking crazy. And like I'm reading this, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> What? Oh, it's it's good. Like it's so interesting and fascinating. <laughs> mm. oh, she's so good. And but yeah, those are the the main histories. Like obviously, there's so many more, and I am restricted by my inability to read Cantonese or Mandarin or Mandarin. The the languages that these original scripts were written in. And, and plus, like, translating any language to English isn't always accurate no, anyways. No, you lose a lot of things, like nuances and stuff like that, mm-hmm. so... And English, we <sighs> sometimes don't have English words for things. Yeah, yeah, and so it's it's fascinating. <sighs> the story of Mulan is amazing. Dear God! I know. Do you have any questions for me, for me before I do my little Mulan? I... I'm curious, because you said you really want there to be songs in the Mulan movie that's being made. Is there yes. something you hope that they maybe show in her character that they didn't in the first movie that they made in 1999? Having seen the the original content, I would really like to see her parents support which I don't know if they would do Mm -hmm. but I would like to see them put out the fact that she's not dishonoring her family by going there like she's not having to do this and showing that she's not like breaking chains and all that stuff and like it's considered like norm or it's considered allowed from her parents yeah, so and, like society might shun her for it, but yeah. her family specifically, yeah. you but want she, to know that. Yeah, she has support, and mm-hmm. the people who love her care about her and understand who she is, because I feel like you had so much, you had so little time at the end to see them accept her for mm-hmm. who she was. I would like to see more of that acceptance, because it's so good to see and to not have to be like, oh, well, I have to go against everything that is my family in order to be myself. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see it be more of a, I can be myself because my family allows me that strength. They they feed into her strength. They don't make her doubt herself or anything mm-hmm. like that. Like, you could obviously have parents with expectations. Like, you could still do the crazy makeover scene where they're like, well, we want you to be this. But when she comes to them with the idea to sacrifice herself for them for them to see it as a as an honorable act instead of as her fighting for her father not needing to go him saying that that dishonors him Mm -hmm. i think really hurt her and i think it would be nice to see him acknowledge the fact beforehand of what she's doing Um, so i would like to see that i think that would be really really powerful but, yeah. Do you have any fond memories of Mulan from your past? Aside from the movie. <laughs> Aside from the movie. Or how the movie impacted you as a youngling. <laughs> I remember finding the act of her cutting her hair for some reason. Like, mm-hmm. I know they made it more impactful because it was like she's getting rid of her long hair as a woman to mm-hmm. be more disguised as a man. But just, like, her determination in doing it and not even second-guessing it, Mm -hmm. I thought was really powerful. Yeah. And even today, like, a lot of... There is an act and representation of, like, a woman cutting her hair means something. Mm -hmm. It's still a rebellion, in a way. Yeah, it's like, okay, I'm changing. And then allowing the hair to grow out again is, like, I'm this... I read something interesting where someone was like, I cut my hair because... I wasn't accepting the past me, but now that my hair is gray now, I'm accepting the current me. So it's like mm-hmm. talking about that. So I kind of think that's, I like that about Mulan, how she used something as big as a sword yeah, to make a, an impact. Yeah. That was such a powerful scene. It was. It was yeah. really powerful. Yeah. The rain. Oh, 
<sighs> such such determin the determination in her face. Mm-hmm. Good, absolutely stunning. I'm excited for the movie to see what they mm-hmm. do. Yeah, I'm curious. Mm-hmm. So, if any of you listeners out there uh, have any much needed corrections for our pronunciation or comments about your experience with Mulan, mm-hmm. especially if... Or maybe stuff that we got wrong, because we are from yeah. Canada. Oh, yeah. So a lot of the things that Allison likes and I like, or things that we think could are problematic, might not be problematic to you mm-hmm. if you are from or grew up. Like, if you're, like, Chinese-American or Chinese-Canadian, or if you're, like, your family's Chinese, but you've lived in, like, America and didn't grow up with a lot of the culture it just i think it'd be cool to see the Mm -hmm. and understand the difference yeah big thing that we like to do um a big thing that we hope comes from this podcast as well as just having fun and hanging out is learning so Mm -hmm. we love to learn if you want to chat about it lifelong Um, learners lifelong learners uh so yeah that is why i love mulan and fonda before we wrap up is there anything that you're excited about right now yeah Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I am listening to Critical Role. Mm-hmm. And I'm behind. I'm behind. So I know, like, what? They're episode 80 for campaign two. Yeah. I think so. I'm at episode 52. So I'm still behind. Mm-hmm. But I am really excited to get further into it because even just now, it's interesting seeing the characters grow and develop and I really think that like Yasha and Bo and Jester are super super interesting and I think one day I would like to maybe talk about them when I'm more up to date with where they are as a whole mm-hmm. it would be super super cool but I'm just super excited because I just got to the part where they got into um, Jorhas. Yes. <laughs> and I hear a lot of interesting things happen while they're in Jorhas. So much. <laughs> so I'm excited to continue listening. And I'm excited because Adam and I, when we both get caught up, we want to start watching it live on Thursdays <gasps> nice. on their Twitch channel. Yeah. And so I'm excited for that. It's going to be a while because one can only listen to so many three to four hour <laughs> episodes in a day. Yeah. But I'm still very much so enjoying it right now. Yay! Yeah. That's awesome. I also love Critical Role. It's good. It's good. Mm-hmm. It's good, 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 good. So very good. good. <sighs> so that's what I'm excited about. Awesome. Well, listeners, you can find us wherever podcasts can be found. Please make sure to rate and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps get our show seen more. Um, and it's just kind of nice to hear what you have to say and what you like. If you want, you can follow us on Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram at wenchbenchpod. And also, if you would like to reach out, you can send us an email at wenchbenchpod at gmail.com. All the art for the Wenchbench was designed by the wonderful Tessa Joyce Reekin. And you can find her on Twitter at wherevile. Well, thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye!